Hi there. Welcome to the Money Mastery Platform with Peter Asari Nyako. Today we are going to look at an interesting topic. We are going to have a good conversation about how you can plan your finances for the new year. And so let's go into, into our discussion for today. In planning your finances for the new year, the first thing you need to look at is to assess your financial situation. Know where you stand financially. Because if you don't know where you stand, you can't decide where you want to be. And so mostly for you to get your finances right in the new year, it is important for you to assess where you stand financially. So in assessing your financial situation or where you stand financially, this is where you need to track your net worth. So when I talk about net worth, I'm talking about your actual financial position, where you stand financially. And so mostly for you to track your net worth, you need to look at your assets. Assets are things that have monetary value. They are the things you have been able to acquire over your life period. So to know your assets, you need to look at, track all your things that have monetary value. So this is where you track your personal assets. So your personal assets are your personal properties. So this can be your car, the land, your computers. So things that have monetary value, they are your personal properties. So for you to know your net worth, track all your personal properties. Take a sheet of paper, take a pen, list them down. Do I have a land? How much can I value the land? What is the valuation of the land? You need to know. Do you have a computer? Do you have a, a car? Do you have a TV set? So list all your personal properties. They are your assets. They have monetary value. List them. And then list your financial properties or your financial assets. So this is cash at hand. So if you have a cash at hand, what is the value? You need to know. Cash at bank. You need to know how much you have in the bank. Your insurance policies. What are the policies you have? When it comes to insurance, you need to know each one of them and list them down because they are assets. Your investment policies or your investment accounts. What investment are you having? So you need to list all your investments as well. And so this will give you a total of all your assets. Once you know the total of your assets, your personal assets, your financial assets, now look at your financial obligations. Financial obligations are the things you owe. You owe others. So we, 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 we call them your liabilities. So you need to list all your liabilities. So for example, let me set this example. Let's say you have a car and you value the car at let's say 50,000 Ghana cities. So you have an asset at a value of 50,000 Ghana cities. But then you took a loan, let's say 40,000 to purchase this car. In this case, when you want to assess your net worth, you don't say I have a car with value at 50,000. You have to take out the liability, which is the loan, the car loan, 40,000 from the 50,000. And so when you're assessing your net worth, now your net worth is 10,000. And so if you are planning your finances for the new year, you are starting with 10,000. That is what you have to your name. And so yes, Track all your net worth by listing your assets and listing your liabilities and knowing the difference. That will help you plan your finances. And then after tracking your net worth, the next most important thing is for you to know your cash flow statement. How your money is flowing. How is your money flowing? Do you have a positive cash flow or you have a negative cash flow? So when we talk about cash flow, we are talking about your income versus your expenditure. So your income is at the left side. Your expenditure is at the right side. So list all your income. Where is your money coming from? Your monthly pay, your dividend that you get from your investment, your interest, your giftings that you receive, every money that comes into your hand, you need to list them. You need to know the total value. That becomes your income. On the other side, let's look at your expenditure. 
these are the monies you let go so the rent you pay the food you buy the electricities you pay your utilities everything you need to list them they become your expenditure so take a pen and a sheet list your income where your income is coming from list where your income is going and make sure you know the difference so the difference is your cash flow statement is it positive in the sense that your income is greater than your expenditure then that's great or are they the same are you spending your income or are you using your income to take care of your expenditure and then in the end you don't have any money or any surplus that might be dangerous or is your income lesser than your expenditure in this case you are you are digging yourself into a financial hot water most like all people if your income is less than your expenditure then you are setting yourself up for financial frustrations and so make sure always your income is positive yes your cash flow is positive once you have tracked your net worth you have tracked your cash flow then you need to put a budget together this is very important a great year a great financial year begins with a great budget what is a budget a budget is simply a plan to spend money so you are putting a plan together on how you want to spend your money and so in in creating a budget you need to categorize your spending you need to categorize your spending and so you can categorize them into essential spending and non-essential spending when i talk about essential spending i'm talking about monies that goes into your needs things that you need for let's say a month and so there are some spending that you will incur every month so this become your essential spending and then all other things become your non-essential spending so now let's take them one after the other talking about essential spending so your essential spending are the monies that goes into things that you cannot do away with so they are your needs and then the all other things becomes non-essential spending so now let's look at some personal budget categories how you can categorize your budget you can categorize your budget into let's say one housing yes housing this 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 is your rent if you are paying a mortgage that can also come under housing student accommodation if your kids are in school they will have to pay the accommodation you need to also factor that into your housing the second element that you can you can categorize your budget is your child care yes if you are a new family you have given birth you know your child maybe they are in nursing or you have a nanny who's taking care of them you need to you need to categorize you need to list all those items uh, their school uniform their school meals that they will do all this going to child care because you need to take care of your child you need to budget for those needs you can also and then another category is your transportation so with transportation we can talk about your fuel if if you own your own car you need to budget for your fuel if you don't own your own car budget for taxis boats uh trotsky yes so you can budget for that you can also budget for your maintenance if you own your own car you will need to maintain your car so budget for maintenance budget for loan payments maybe you took the car on loan you need to also budget on loan payment you can another aspect of your budget is your utilities so your utilities you are talking about your water your gas your electricity your internet now gtv will come to you for their tv lenses and so if you're doing your budget you make sure you also factor in your tv lines it's very very important yeah so then you, you need food food as well so groceries the things you need for your groceries your household items takeaways if you want to go out with your family to a nice restaurant to enjoy you can also put it in your budget so budgeting is actually 
listing all the things that will go into your monthly expenditure. Yes. All the things that will go into your monthly expenditure. You take your time, you, then you list, you list all this down. What other thing can you do to make sure your budget is, is on point? And so there's this rule that I think is very useful for everyone to, to, to consider. The 50, 30, 20 rule. Yes. So this is where you break your budget into three categories. The 50% will go into your needs. 30% will go into your wants. And 20% will go into savings. And so when you are budgeting, make sure 50% of your income. So let's say you have 5,000 Ghana CDs. 50% of that 5,000 Ghana CDs should go into your needs. This is where your food rent transport into uh, the things that you need so your life can move on the 50 percent can go into that then your wants 30 percent entertainment is a want you can do away with entertainment but if you want to subscribe to the dstv channel if you want to pay your tv licenses and all that they are for entertainment if you want to renew a gym membership if you want to uh go on vacation they are wants so the 30 percent of your income should focus on your wants so when you are budgeting make sure 30 percent of your income you allocate that to your wants and then the 20 percent savings savings 20 percent should go into your savings so the 50 30 20 percent rule says that 50 percent of your income should go into your needs 30 percent should go into your wants and then 20 percent to go into savings and we will talk about how you can save effortlessly and i think this is one of the great ways to save effortlessly so yes we are still on how to plan your finances for the new year and then we are on budgeting now let's move from budgeting and then go into make more money yes in planning your finances for the new year i think one thing you need to do as you tell yourself, I want to earn more money. Earn more money. So this is where multiple streams of income. So now let's talk about multiple streams of income. Maybe you own a job. You have only one job. That brings in your income. For you to earn more money, you need to create multiple streams of income. So how do you create multiple streams of income? So in the new year, tell yourself, I will learn a skill. And then monitor the school over time. I will maybe change my job. And so you may need to put in applications. Send applications to as many organizations as you can. Because you want to change your job in the new year. Maybe do investment in a way to earn additional income. So look for viable investments where you can put your money there to increase your income. And so what I'm saying is that in the new year, sit down, ask yourself, how do I want to earn more money? Do I want to upgrade my skill so I can monetize it? Do I want to upgrade my skill so I can get a rise at work? Do I want to put in more applications so I can quit my current job and take on a new job? Or do I want to do over time at work, maybe you may need to see your HR department and have a conversation with them. Or you want to leverage investment. Everyone, all of us cannot start a business, but everyone can invest. So maybe because of your tight schedule, you cannot create another stream of income or going into starting a new business and all that. But you can leverage investment to increase your income. So look at the possibility of putting your money into an investment account to, to, to earn additional money. So one question you need to ask yourself when planning your finances for the new year is how do I increase my income? And what I said right now will help you put that question into perspective. Now, after dealing about earning more money, now let's look at saving more money. Yes, in the new year, in planning your finances, Ask yourself, how do I save more money? 
it is very important because the more you save the more you will have money to invest the more you will have money to do other things and so thinking about the question of how do i save more money will help you to actually make savings as lifestyle and in saving more money you need to be consistent so you need to start by putting some money even if it's a piggy bank start putting some money in that piggy bank very important or you may want to go into a bank and open a savings account and be consistent you may also want to automate your savings and so let's say every month if your employer pays you the bank will automatically deduct your savings from that payment or from that salary so automate your savings put it put in the standing orders so once money hits your account it goes directly into your savings account it will help you save more money yes so it's important for you to ask yourself how do i save more money in the new year and leverage that to 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 save more money and then one question you also need to ask yourself in planning your finances for the new year is do i owe some people that can hinder my financial progress or that can hinder my financial success let me take you back to when i was talking about your net worth your asset and your liabilities so i spoke about your financial obligations so here for you to plan your finance very well ask yourself how do i pay off my debts how do i pay off my debts so this is where you can tell yourself i want to save towards my debt payment so if you have a debt of let's say twenty thousand ghana cities you can make it a goal that i am saving consistently to cut off that debt cut off that debt or i will make plans in such a way that every month i will pay 10 percent of my debt yes so it's it for financial planning you have to be intentional and you have to be strategic yes you have to plan strategic and so if you owe someone twenty thousand ghana city and you cannot get the money at a go to go and settle the person sit down break your debt down and give yourself let's say i'm giving myself six months to clear off my debt divide the total amount by the number of months you want to clear that debt that will give you the minimum amount you have to pay every month so you can clear off that debt so paying off your debt in the new year is very important and it, it will take strategy to do that so look at the total amount of debt you have break them down and be consistent in paying off your debt another aspect or another thing you can do to, to to plan your finances in the new year is to build your social capital build your social capital this thing is very critical to your net work is your net worth the people you have in your network will determine your net worth and so if you want to achieve financial success you need to align yourself with people who will influence your decision who will help you do that and so you are if you are someone who spend a lot then you may have to work with people who, 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 who are frugal people who do not spend that much and they will influence your decision if you want to earn more money then you you have to align yourself with people who are making multiple streams of income and they will influence your decision if you want to build a new skill align yourself with people who are acquiring new skills and they will influence your decision and so if you have five wise friends the probability that you'll be the number six is high and the opposite is also true if you have five foolish friends the probability that you will be the number six is high and so for us to achieve our financial goals in 2024 or this new year we need to align ourselves with great and positive people great and positive people so it is very it is very very important and then the last now talk about 
in planning our finances for the new year is that you don't need to start the new year without goals, without financial goals. After assessing your situation, drafting your budget, knowing the people you want to align yourself with, you need to have a goal. You need to work towards something. So set financial goals for yourself. Personal goals. Set financial goals for your family. Set financial goals for the legacy you want to leave. Set financial goals for education. Set financial goals for how you want to acquire new assets. And once you do that, make sure you have you have categorize them into short-term goals, goals that you can achieve from one month to three months, goals that you can achieve from three months to six months, that become your medium-term goal, and goals that you want to achieve from six to the next 12 months. So in the new year, the new year is just 12 months, make sure you have goals, short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals. Make sure you have assessed your financial situation. You have tracked your net worth. You know your cash flow statement. Make sure you have put a budget together. And make sure you have a plan on how you want to pay off your debts. You have a plan on how to increase your income or earn more money. And you have a plan on how to save more money. See you in another episode. Thank you very much.